Welcome to Concordia On Air. I'm Jackson, and tonight... In news, 480,000 cars recalled. And in sports, the end becomes unkind to Concordia's women hockey team. And in arts and entertainment, a Disney drama disaster. All that and more on Concordia On Air. The Integrated Science Center has made for a fantastic learning and study space on campus since its construction. My name is Parker. And I'm Jackson. And Jackson, there is something, there's a buzz in the air. Something very important I think happened yesterday or the day before. I think they were released yesterday. Yes. W yes. What am I talking about? Why you would be talking about our little golden friend, the Oscar, which yes. please give us an Oscar for this show. But we deserve it. Yes. I, or an Emmy or no, you know what? No, I want a Grammy for this show. We yeah. don't talk about my singing enough. Do I sing on the show? Should Let's I do it. The Let's show? do it. Oh, do, what, what song do you want me to sing? I don't know. Uh, sing about how great the Oscars are. I love the Oscars. I don't know anyone named Oscar. Oscar, Oscar. That was terrific. Thank you. I really tried. It's Oscar. terrific. Thank you. You can follow me on SoundCloud at uh, Little Rapper 48. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, anyway, Great so, American so, rapper, so, Parker so, Erickson, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so the Oscars are going on. Are you, were you really happy to see anyone's name or any movie announced? Uh, I was extremely happy to see Kristen Stewart get nominated. Agreed. I was also extremely happy that Spider-Man No Way Home was only nominated for one Oscar, which I think is one too many, actually. Are you serious? Well, yes. What, what's, what's the beef with No Way Home? I, I, it was an all right movie. Definitely not something deserving of an Oscar. You know what? Totally fair, and I totally understand. We have something else that is going on in our world today. Can you can you talk to us a little bit more about the, the big world event, the, the gathering of nations that we have called the Olympics? Yes, the Olympics. I can do the Olympics. You know, I tried skiing one time. It did not go well. I fell down on my face. And that was uh, for the to contend, to contend, to contend again, to contend in the finals. I was very far away from being an Olympic skier. Um, I don't believe that. But I fell. You fell. I fell. Did you get back up again? No. So you're still on the ski slope? <laughs> well, I got back Mentally, up. Mentally, maybe? Not immediately. I did not get back up. You know, that's OK. You, I was you helped took up. your time. Did you, see, did you watch Michaela Schifrin last night, the Olympic no. skier? I, I don't So watch the she Olympics. had, a, it was really interesting, and it was actually really heartbreaking. It reminded me a little bit of how, how um, Simone Biles was injured at the last Olympics, and the response from people on the internet was a little bit cruel, in my opinion. Um, Michaela Schifrin is one of the best um, American women skiers, um, one of the best skiers, period, in the world. And last night, she me. crashed out on the course Oh within my. you know less than 30 seconds of her run which is oh very my. unusual for her and she sat on the course for like 10 minutes just distraught and just in shock that she had done what she's done because i mean olympians they don't make mistakes like yeah that, there, right? there's so much pressure to do this thing you're not going to get paid for and be a national icon yeah quick question for you what's your favorite olympic sport and favorite oscar category uh bobsledding and yeah. uh, best director. And best director. I would say mine is best actress in a best, no, best supporting actress. I, I love giving some love to them. Um, and then favorite Olympic sport. I, I really love couples skating. I don't know. There's something so whimsical about it. All right. Couples skating, which means we're going to cool runnings you to the news. A very warm welcome to our news desk tonight. My name is Andy. And I'm Paul. Student Government Association has opened her arms for applications as the current government's team or term nears the end. With less than 13 days to the election date, the SDA president and class representative positions are open for petitions. Candidates interested in the presidency position must collect a minimum of 300 signatures and 75 of class representative. 
Applicants have up to Monday 14th of February to collect and present signatures to the Office of Student Engagement by 4 p.m. Upon approval, the candidates will be allowed to start campaigning from 5 p.m. the same day, and the campaign runs till a day before elections, which is on February 22nd. All candidates are asked to adhere to the stipulated policies filled to which applicable consequences will be applied. Hyundai and Kia have issued a recall of over 480,000 cars and SUVs within the United States, along with the following warning. Park outside and away from buildings. The recall is due to a recently discovered defect within the car's computer control modules, which may cause the units to short circuit and start a fire within the vehicle, even without the engine running. Dealers will inspect and possibly replace the anti-lock braking control modules in qualifying vehicles. According to documents released by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, three of the nearly 500,000 vehicles being recalled have caught fire. As of Tuesday, February 8th, there have been no injuries. And truck drivers are blocking a key border crossing between the U.S. and Canada, sparking fears of economic disruption while United or while limited U.S. bound traffic is being allowed to cross the Ambassador Bridge in Ontario, Canada bound lanes from Detroit remain closed. The protest across Canada against vaccine rules and COVID restrictions are now two weeks old, having mostly centered on the capital, Ottawa. Another border crossing between Montana and Alberta have also been blocked. The closure of the Ambassador Bridge is particularly significant because nearly 30% annual trade between the U.S. and Canada comes through it. I have already heard from automakers and food grocers. Canadian Transport Minister Omar Al-Gabra said on Tuesday, this is really a serious cause for concern, said the minister. After two years of closed borders, Australia will finally be reopening to fully vaccinated international travelers. This announcement came from the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison on Monday the 7th following a meeting of the National Security Committee. Since 2020, the country has been open only to citizens, backpackers, international students, and migrant workers. Despite this, the country has still seen over 2 million COVID cases, which have resulted in approximately 4,000 deaths. The reopening is planned for the 21st of February. European scientists say they have made a major breakthrough in the quest to develop practical nuclear fission the energy process that powers the stars. In a story produced by Jonathan Emos, a BBC science correspondent, the UK-based jet laboratory has smashed its own world record for the amount of energy it can extract by squeezing together two amps of hydrogen. If unclear fusion can be successfully recreated on Earth, it holds out the potential of virtually unlimited supplies of low carbon, low radiation energy. The experiments produced 59 megajoules of energy over five seconds. This is more than double what, the, or what was achieved in a similar task back in 1957. It's not a massive energy output, only enough to boil about 60 kettles worth of water. But the significance in that it's validated design choice that have been made for an even bigger fusion reactor now being constructed in France. And now into an interview with Parker. Hello everyone, my name is Parker and today in the studio we have the wonderful Sarah Ramstead who is the community engagement intern. Sarah, can you share a little bit about yourself? I'm Sarah, I am a double major with French and Global Studies and I am a sophomore here at Concordia. Awesome, you know, I've had the pleasure to know Sarah a little bit through classes. We've had a few Global Studies classes together and a few social activism classes. I want to know all about community engagement. So, so we, so there's so much community engagement to be done that there's an entire internship all about it. Yeah. And you're doing the internship, <laughs> which is really, really awesome. And they're so lucky to have you. Um, tell me, what do you do in your position? I do a lot of things. I interview professors. I um, kind of go through information that we can get from surveys, and I interpret all of that data that I collect. And then I bring it to Dr. Ken Foster and we discuss what to do next and how Concordia can engage more in the community. 
I love how analytical that all is. I really think, <laughs> you know, in the humanities, which is an area that we both study the humanities into the social sciences, mm -hmm. there's always such a big emphasis on qualitative research, like going out and like talking with people. Yes. But quantitative is just as important. In, in fact, I would say maybe sometimes even more <laughs> important um, just because it's, it's raw data. So tell mm -hmm. me, what, what are these surveys like? Like, who are you sending these surveys to? And what are the types of questions being prompted? Are there questions being prompted? Yes. So the past intern sent out a survey to professors actually asking how they've engaged in the community in the past and how they've gotten students engaged in the community. And now it's my job to interpret those results. And what I've done is sort those out and I've seen what's most popular, how many internships do people do, how many volunteering jobs do people do. And now I'm actually interviewing um, professors and then I'm seeing what do they like to do and do they need resources from Concordia or from us to do more. Okay, that is so, so, so important and so amazing. I think some of the best courses I've ever taken at Concordia was when there was a bit of community engagement mm -hmm. um, incorporated within that class. Um, in my nonverbal comm class, we literally went to Eventide and uh -huh. worked with nonverbal patients, which was just so eye-opening. Yeah. Um, have you taken any classes like that and are you hoping to take more? Well, I'm only a sophomore, yes, so obviously <laughs> it's been a little challenging too with COVID, mm -hmm. um, but I am in a peak class right now. It's intercultural communications with Dr. Amundsen, so that's been super fun so far. Um, yeah, I do hope to get more involved in the community and maybe that in my internship right now will take me out a little farther, but we'll see. And this might just be such a simple question to ask, but <laughs> I really do want to know, like, what is the importance of community engagement? Like, why why, why should we be devoted to going out into Fargo-Moorhead and, and, you know, engage with different nonprofits or organizations in different capacities? Can you explain or talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's super important for Concordia to get involved in the community because then we can build relationships between ourselves and the community outside of us, Fargo-Moorhead. And that also helps professors and students get out there too, especially students that are new to the community, professors that are new to the community. And it also just brings the community into Concordia as well. That's awesome. Okay, again, I, I just <laughs> think this is the coolest. I did see the job description for it when it was up on Handshake. Oh. And I was reading it off and I was thinking, wow, like just like how interesting, like, like the kind of research that you really get to be a part of. Okay, well, that's really cool. So the n next thing that I want to know then is with all the research that you've accumulated, like what has been something that's really eye-opening? Like, like are you seeing any trends and the patterns of like what kind of community engagement professors are doing? Yes, okay. um, I'm seeing so many trends and they're so interesting. I love going through all that data and seeing what's going on. Um, I've been going through peak things actually, looking at what students like and there's a whole mix of different perspectives on that. So that um, has shown a lot of information. I haven't really finished that yet so I can't come to a conclusion. But um, internships are the most popular so far. <laughs> and um, yeah, with interviewing professors, they want to get more engaged. They want to mm -hmm. go out there. They just need some resources and to have some pre-existing relationships to make it easier. No, that makes total sense. And I'm glad that you're doing the work to help progress that because I, oh. <laughs> again, like uh, this is such important work that you're doing and I'm excited that you're doing it because if there's a person for the job, everyone covers would be Sarah Ramstead. Yes. Okay, <laughs> amazing. Okay, well, is there any like big takeaways that you want to talk about from your internship? Like anything that like on why someone else should apply for this position next year if it's open again? Um, yeah, it, um, Dr. Foster has let me take a, a very creative route with everything, which is very outside of my comfort zone. I love structure and I like telling, mm -hmm. or like I like it when people tell me what to do. So he said, I'm not gonna let you get away with that. You need to good. figure this out on your own. So it has taken me out of my comfort zone, but that's actually a good thing. Even interviewing professors, I get, mm -hmm. I get a little nervous about that, but at the end I feel very proud of myself and I do get so much valuable information and that's what's important. Okay. Well, awesome. Sarah, thank you so much for talking about your internship. I have one more quick question for you. What's your favorite meal at DS? Really hard hitting uh, stuff, everyone. I love the desserts, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, I love going to the maze and getting my salad at lunch every yes. day. I either get the almond and raspberry or the Caesar okay. salad. They have Caesar salad? Yes. I love Caesar. I need, a, <laughs> I need to live my life more like Sarah. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the studio mm -hmm. today. And now on to sports. Uh, thank you for joining us again. My name is Andy. And I'm Paul. Concordia's freshman, Tommy Khan, used the strength of a pair of school records and two NCAA Division III top three times recorded at NDSU Bison Open to 
or to earn my track athlete of the week's honor. Can becomes the first Koba athlete to win the conference weekly award since teammate Carl Wright and Mayak Athlete of the Week in freshman season in 2019. It was a case of evens were odd in Concordia's 72 loss, 72 to 56 loss to Bethel. The Cobbers outscored the Royals 31 to 29 in the odd numbered quarters, while Bethel held a 42 to 23 advantage in the even numbered periods. The loss is the third straight for Concordia, who moved to 7 to 11 overall and 7 to 9 in the MIAC. The Cobbers are now in seventh place in the MIAC standings. Bethel wins for the fourth straight game and improves to a 14-7 in all games and 13-5 in league play. The Iron was unkind to Concordia in their 1-1 one -one overtime tie with St. Benedict. The Cobbers hit the pipe late in regulation, had a short clunk of the crossbar in the dying seconds of overtime, and then pounded the post in a shutout with or which was won by the Benny's 2-1. The good news for the Cobas is that the, this tie ends the team's seven-game losing skid. Concordia is now 6-12-1 overall and 2-9-1 in league. St. Vince remain unbeaten in its last five games and it's now 9-7-1 and 5-4-1 in the Mayak. And now into a and &E with Parker and Jackson. Welcome to Arts and Entertainment, everyone. My name is Parker. And I'm Jackson. That has not changed, unfortunately. But I think one of these days, we're going to get a name change in there. Jackson, we have some very pressing news to talk about regarding yes. the entertainment giant that is Walt Disney. Disney. Tell us, what, what do you need to inform our audience about today? So, as we've discussed earlier, the Oscars mm -hmm. were announced yesterday. Three out of the five uh, nominees for Best Animated Feature were released by the Mouse House themselves. The Mouse House, I love it, yes. okay. Now, normally, animated features are Disney's financial juggernauts, That's right? Funny. I mean, Snow White, the first animated feature-length film ever released by Disney, right? Mm -hmm. No, yep, So I'm on it's board. like their DNA. Okay. But since this pandemic, they have decided that Raya, Luca, and Encanto are all not worthy of the same theatrical treatment as films such as Cruella, all of their Marvel films, um, a few of their live action films. Mm -hmm. uh, Soul, uh, another uh, film was that, that released was, in theaters? It was not, oh, okay. it was killed by Disney. For some reason, Disney has chosen to not release these animated films in full mm -hmm. to theaters while they're giving preferential treatment to their live action divisions. Uh, there's been less delays consistently for those films. Uh, I get that it's a pandemic and money's hard, but it just seems really suspicious that a week after Luca comes out, Fast and the Furious 9 is released, mm -hmm. which went on to become the fifth highest grossing film in America last year. Seriously, wow, yes. lots of people love their Fast and Furious. Yeah, and lots of people love Luca though. Yeah, no, you're so right, great place to take the kids. Yeah, imagine if Luca was in the movie theater. It would have made a lot of money mm -hmm. being a Pixar film. Everybody loves Pixar. Yes. And it's a story that, as we saw, resonated with a lot of people. It so, resonated with me, yeah. and I'm, t I'm old. Yeah, it resonates with everybody. Why isn't Disney releasing these films can I ask a question? Yes. Or, or do you have a point to get to? I don't want to disrupt you. You can ask a question. Thank you. Ask okay, so I was wondering, I, and this is hard to even even have debate about or, or think about because we haven't seen a change in the trend thus far, but do you think with the launching of Disney Plus, it's been out for two-ish years now, give and take a year or yeah. not, um, do you think that they are launching these very big, you know, very pretty huge movies, you know, movies that are on par with your Incredibles and Finding Nemo and Pocahontas, all Disney classics. Like, do you believe that they're releasing them exclusively on Disney Plus so a lot of people will then buy the platform to watch the movies? Do you, so then my follow-up question is then, do you think that there'll come a day when they have a loyal enough big fan base who are gonna continue their subscription that they're gonna stop doing that? They're gonna start back with in-theater releases, kind of pull back on just putting it on there, just uploading it and watching everyone see. 
I think it all entirely depends. Like Disney Plus, uh, I think today it was just released that they have reached 129.9 million subscribers. Really? They are currently growing at a faster rate than Netflix was. Mm -hmm. And I think that the fact that there was a pandemic immediately following Disney's launch or Disney Plus's launch um, and the fact that they are dumping these movies onto Disney Plus is helping bols bolster theirs, those numbers. Mm -hmm. But I think that's simply because Disney, uh, there's, we could get into like this whole streaming economy thing, mm -hmm. but sh to make a short story short or a long story short, um, Disney didn't have a lot of content on Disney Plus when they first launched. They really had Mandalorian, the Jeff Goldblum show. High School Musical, the Musical, <laughs> the, the Series. High School Musical, the Loved Musical, it. the Series. Um, and that was it for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a pandemic, you can't produce new content, so why not use what you already have? So Soul get, kind of gets a pass because Soul had been delayed. It was planned for 2020 and came out Christmas 2020 mm -hmm. on the service. But... We've now entered a time where movies are opening theatrically. Encanto opened theatrically and only got 30 days before it was on Disney+. Mm -hmm. Raya was released day and date. Um, Luca was not released at all uh, in theaters and straight to Disney+. And the thing is, is those numbers have shown for the month and there was no growth on Disney+, Plus when Luca was released, which means everybody that watched Luca already was subscribed and it, mm -hmm. it didn't gain anything for the service. And this upcoming uh, Pixar film, Turning Red, notably, has just been moved to Disney Plus in a time where we have Spider-Man, a movie where Disney has interest in, is making almost $2 billion. I understand. I understand now. What is the motivation behind this? And yeah. a part of me wonders too, like like putting Luca straight onto Disney Plus and a few you know other movies. Like it almost feels like it, it cheapens them up a little bit, yeah. despite there being millions of dollars poured into the production yeah. and the animation of these films. And a couple Pixar yeah. creators specifically have kind of spoken out, and they said it is disheartening. And they also said something that doesn't it doesn't really ring true that families aren't going to movie theaters mm -hmm. but when family movies are released they typically in the heyday of this whole pandemic box office family movies were consistently doing the best we live in a world where paw patrol is almost as good as a disney movie mm -hmm. in bo box office wise paw patrol the movie was only 10 million dollars behind raya and the last dragon they made a movie yes i did not know there was a paw patrol yes. movie and I will it be made this almost out. as much money as the disney Best Animated Feature nominee, Raya and the Last Dragon. Wow. What's going on? What is going on? on okay, everyone, Arts and Entertainment is now the new whistlebl whistleblower of Concordia on Air. Let me tell you Join something. us next week where we'll find out what's going on with TV. 